then on Facebook Marketplace, there is a subcategory. It's called the quarter auction page. Quarter, that's all you can bid. And on this quarter auction page, you can put up an item and it might sell for three or four bucks. But you put it on your porch, the person comes and if it's $3, they slide the $3 under the mat and they take the item. Try that here in California. You put all these items out on the porch, uh, somebody would take them, but they wouldn't leave you $3 under the, <laughs> they're porch pirates around. Mike, the Golden State Picker, making some adjustments around here. Yep, I'm back here in my garage with one more video of the stuff that I sold while on vacation in North Carolina in my home back there. I'm going to go over that in a minute. We're going to talk about the title of the video. We're going to talk about stuff, reselling, what's going on. Uh, occasionally, I ramble on about a few other things, so we'll see what happens. Just don't know. I uh I just like to get in front of the camera and let it go. I don't try to cut it up and slice it and all that kind of stuff. So if you're new to my channel, I am Mike, Golden State Picker out of San Jose, California, better known as Silicon Valley. A lot of great stuff here, guys. A lot of, uh, a lot of wealth, so I find some pretty cool stuff. I um, also have a home in North Carolina. The area is Jacksonville, Camp Lejeune, that area. So I can give you a, geographic, a geographical location. I am about 25 minutes from the beach, which I like. Beaches there in North Carolina are beautiful. Uh, my son-in-law, Adam, we're going to talk about him in this video. But my son-in-law, Adam, is in the Coast Guard. And uh, they are located there. So that's why we moved there. We are one house away from them. We bought a house one door down. And that's what we're doing it for, uh, my wife and uh, myself, so we can see our grandkids a little bit more, all that kind of stuff. But Adam's in the Coast Guard, and uh, he's, uh, uh, ever since he, first off, he used to live here in the Vallejo area, which is close to San Francisco. And uh, it was expensive, but Adam saw what I was doing, and he got hooked on reselling here, and then he brought it back to North Carolina, and he's doing it there. He's doing it successfully. Uh, to help himself, uh, basically, because we all know the military doesn't pay a lot of money, okay? It's just the fact. The one big thing that he has is they help with his housing, okay? So every area is different. When he was here, because the housing cost is so expensive, uh, he got a bigger allowance. But all that said, he still doesn't make enough money for three kids, a couple of pets, and his wife. It's difficult, not easy. If you're in the military, it is very hard to uh, keep it together sometimes, especially when uh, you're being deployed. All kind, we know all that. I can talk about that all day long, and I can talk about how I feel that they're not getting paid enough, in my opinion, okay? They serve our country. They've done a lot for our, for our country. But anyhow, Adam is very successful at it. He is doing uh, well. Now, uh, you ask me, What's the difference? Because this is a great opportunity for me to see before I decide if I want to leave California permanently and go back there. Uh, that is an issue because I, I want to keep thrifting. And thrifting there is 100% different than over here. But it can be done there. And Adam is proving that to me each time I go back. And uh, what Adam is doing is he does sell on eBay. It dries up a lot during the winter because there's no garage sales in that. But Adam is very big at looking for stuff on Facebook. That gets to the title of the video. Can you make money? What can you do? Sourcing, all that kind of stuff uh, besides eBay. And you can. You just have to really be a little bit more resilient, a little bit more, you know, uh, you know tough. You got to look for, look for things in different spots. We're in a community that's a pretty good sized community. And... Um, he uses that community a lot to find stuff. A lot of people are giving stuff away. That's the one thing I've noticed about back there and here. Really back there. Very, if you're in a community, it seems to be tight knit. There's Facebook groups for your housing development, all that kind of stuff. Back here, it doesn't seem to be that way anymore. It's such a big area. Uh, yeah, we have next door. That's nice. But uh, next door seems to be all about complaining. That's about what that's come out to. So I love that Facebook is very active there. Facebook Marketplace works really well back there. I can tell you that because I'm trying to find stuff and everything I look at is sold. Looking for a table saw, all that kind of stuff. Sold. 
uh, he's looking for another set of golf clubs. I'm going to have to find him a set here because every time they pop up there, they're sold. And Facebook Marketplace is where they're moving in at. And Adam uses it ex almost exclusively. He does a lot of eBay, but he does two things. He uses Facebook Marketplace. And then on Facebook Marketplace, there is a subcategory. It's called the quarter auction page. Quarter, that's all you can bid. And on this quarter auction page, you can put up an item and it might sell for three or four bucks. But you put it on your porch, the person comes and if it's $3, they slide the $3 under the mat and they take the item. Try that here in California. You put all these items out on the porch, uh, somebody would take them, but they wouldn't leave you $3 under the... <laughs> there are porch pirates around here. There are porch pirates everywhere, but in general, you get my drift. It's a little bit more community oriented. I don't know how to explain it. I just... I can't, okay? I know the difference. I live here in California, but when I go back there, I see a difference, okay? And I'm not knocking California all over the place, okay? I'm just stating the facts, and people get freaky about that kind of stuff. I don't care. It is different, okay? But that's how Adam is making some money. He doesn't, so he goes and buys storage lockers too, but he doesn't buy a lot. He buys kind of strategically, he tries. And he bought a recent storage locker. He sent it to me before I came out there. And he said, hey, what do you think? And I was, you know, I'm like, oh, my gosh, how much they want? You know, and I think it was at three or 400 at that point. And I think he ended up paying $600 for it. If I have the picture of the locker, I'm going to show it to you. I will show you the one piece that sold that I was like, okay, wow, that sold for that much. So here it is. Now, as an old woodworker, when I first started out, I liked the shaker style, the country style of furniture. That's what I built. And I built one of these, and it's a pie safe. And uh, Adam, it was in the locker. There were two of them, a big chest, a bunch of other stuff. But this pie safe, I'm going to show it to you up here, and I'll show you what it sold for. But that's the picture of it. And then here's what it sold for. It's up on Facebook Marketplace. He sold it for $450. Now, I can tell you that if that pie safe was here, I don't think you would have got $450. Might have been lucky to get 150 or 200. Just not the style here. Remember, we talked about each area being different. That's where he's at, North Carolina, and where I have my house at, second house at. You know, that's where I have it at. And it's, you know, it just happens to be uh, a different vibe. So that kind of stuff sells. And the gentleman, I was there when he came to get it. I was, I was, I'm not saying I was stunned. I'm not stunned at anything, but I'm like, okay, let's see if this guy pulls out the $450. Sure did. Gave him the $450. Loved it. Said his wife needed it. And there it went. Off it goes. So that's what I'm talking about. It can be done everywhere, but you just have to be a little, you have to adapt to your area and kind of, and you know, if you're doing it, you know what I'm talking about. So that's what I have to learn too. I'm going to have to learn how to adapt to that area, the times that I'm there, so forth. But I'm there to help mostly help Adam. That's what I'm going to be there for. Um, and uh, we'll do a lot of work together, hopefully down the road. But uh, it's been fun. So that's how Adam does it. Uh, makes good money on Facebook Marketplace, quarter auctions. Let me know if you have other ideas that you are doing in your area. Okay? Put them down in the comments down below. All right, let's get right off into what we sold here. We sold 19 items, $1,246. One of them was a pretty good sale. We'll talk about that one in a second. This is a good video. It's going to show you Joe average pieces, just average Joe. Uh, simple stuff and then a couple of hits here and there. That's what we're going to show you. So a lot of bin stuff and some on, eh, about half bins and half uh, other stuff. So let's get going. Let's start right off with the bins. Everybody wants to know about my bins. I pay $100 for them. Um, they're loaded with books, four by four by five feet, Gaylords, watermelons and watermelon sizes, full of books and sometimes some other things we talk about. So here's Dune, four book paperback set. I believe this was on one of the videos where I showed you getting books from. And this little four book set of Dune sold fairly quickly. Uh, what did Dune sell for? Uh, let's see if I can find it. 22 plus $8 shipping. So I gotta start stacking this stuff down here. Remember I talked about uh, uh, manuals for cars manuals for anything and here was a manual for a generator this is generic diagnostic repair manual this is the last one i sold the other ones all three to one gentleman 
And this one here didn't sell for a lot of money, but hey, out of my bins and I'll take it. And the generator sold for 15. And this man is going to pick this up locally. So he's going to come by Saturday and pick this up. So uh, it's kind of kind of odd when you see a $15 item. I believe he's in Watsonville, which is right up by Santa Cruz. So he said he was going to be in town. So I think that's why he's doing it. But anyhow, uh, keep your eye out for car manuals, all that kind of stuff. All right. Now, talking about books, here is a famous author. We'll talk about him in a second, Stephen King. The book is Cujo. I had a comment in my um, uh, one of my videos, and they were saying, hey, what's the difference between book club edition and basically a first edition, and why, do they sell, why does first edition sell better than book club? Basically, everybody wants what they call a first first, and that is not going to be a book club edition. Okay, the first first is going to be something like this, and this is a first first. Let me see if I can open it up and help you out on that. Um, okay, this one does not have it in it, but this is the first first, okay? Num sometimes they'll have numbers down here, one, two, three, four, back and forth. If you see the one, that means it's a first. If you see the one missing and there's a number two, then it goes back and forth. That's a second printing. So... This is a first, okay? Now, um, they don't all sell for big money, okay? Uh, you notice that some of the first can go for, for good money. This one did not. Uh, it's hard to say what makes one book more popular to collectors and so forth and so on, but you just gotta keep looking. And how do you tell if it's a book club edition? If it said book club edition down here, that's what it would say then you know you have a book club edition. So whenever I open it, it's like opening a Christmas gift. I close, oh no, it's a book club edition. Or if it's not, I go, maybe I got something. I'm looking for signatures. I'm looking for all that kind of stuff. So that's kind of the first uh, edition kind of thing. And that's what people want uh, in general. That one, Cujo, did not sell for uh, a lot of money, $15 plus $8 shipping. So you can see. Um, I don't lot Stephen King books up to uh, either. I just don't. Uh, you make money on it, but I, I I just don't have the space, guys. We talk about that over and over. This is a weird one. Co-creation code deck. It's a book uh, and some cards or something. It's just a little odd, but it sold for some decent money. Uh, the code deck sold for $50 plus uh, $10 shipping, so I like that. Now, this is an interesting item. Look at this. What is this? Everybody's going, what is it? I'll flip it around. Now you might be, now look at it. Heat wave, okay? Synergy stone. You put it in the microwave. Remember the things, the, the things you used to put around your neck and they're like little pellets and you throw them in your microwave, heat them up and that kind of thing. Same principle here. It's a heat wave and then you're supposed to do some stuff with it. You know, massage, that kind of thing. <laughs> Hands here, I don't know. Just kind of an odd shaped thing. Uh, and this soul for, do I have it on here? I do. I should have it on here. Uh, my goodness. What did I do with this one? It sold for like 60 bucks. I'm surprised I didn't put it on the heat wave. There it is. $60 plus 10. Wow. 60 plus 10. Nice sale. Nice. And got that one at Savers. So I, yeah, Savers was pretty good there for that one. I'm trying to see what else I got down here. Uh, let's go into something here and something here. Here we go. Uh, don't forget old software. This is a uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator Deluxe Edition. Nice uh, little uh, game. Now, if they're sealed, they're obviously worth more. And this one, the Microsoft one, sold for 15 plus five. Got that out of my bin of books. So that was pretty nice. Now, this one gave me fits. I'm gonna explain why, okay? There it is. Yeah, everybody knows it's a Bible, okay? It's a Holy Bible, King James, large print, compact Bible. I couldn't fight it for the long... I, I just kept looking around. I was just going, oh, this is crazy. I know where all my Bibles are. Why can't I find this one? This just shows you your perception of your mind and your eyesight, all that kind of stuff. I'm used to looking for Bibles that are, you know, let's say the size of this, a little bit bigger. So your mind gravitates towards that size of a Bible, when in reality, I'm looking for the smaller one. The only thing that finally tipped me off was inside my ad is a ruler. 
and it started to show me it was only five inches. And I finally dawned on me, Mike, your eyesight, it was in the place where I was supposed to be looking. But every time I saw a small one, I might just skip by it. So I finally found it <laughs> because it didn't sell for a lot. That's what was driving me cuckoo. It was like the nice little Bible, large print, all that. And the Bible only sold for, I think it was $14 or something like that and free shipping. Where is it? Oh, my goodness. Yeah, it was $14 uh, plus uh, $15 plus free shipping. <laughs> I'm having a struggle tonight. Wow, that's crazy. Uh, let's stick with this. This is a weird magazine called Kill Pretty. I have no idea. But it says Unsuitable Periodical 18 Plus. Issue number two and issue number three. So if you have issue number one, you need two and three, obviously. Just bizarre. Out of my bin of books. But Kill Pretty got $60 plus $15 shipping. So I'll take 60 bucks. That's really kind of a nice find, right? Um, we better put it back over there just for now. I'm going to save that one. Uh, we're going to go to this one. Uh, Rolex stuff always sells well. I'll tell you, you can make some super good money with Rolex boxes. If you can find the Rolex box plus some original paperwork or something. I mean, it's just crazy what we can make money off of. And uh, so this is Rolex, a simple little book. What is funny is this is 2022 to 2023. The bin the other day, I got 2023 to 2024. So why? It's like weird how they end up like that, but they do. And uh, the Rolex box, nothing, uh, the Rolex books, 13 plus $6 shipping. Rolex boxes, guys, Tiffany boxes, stuff like that. I have sold Louis Vuitton boxes, Louis Vuitton hat boxes. So always, always something we can sell, right? And here's another little thing. Adam showed me that he sold a, uh, I think it was a $20 bill for 40 bucks. And the reason he sold it was because of the serial number was in the order of someone's birth date or something like that. And it's fascinating. If you look at that kind of stuff, there are people that go to the bank, they'll withdraw $500 in $1 bills. And then they go through them looking on the serial number for a serial number that's like all 11115, what, you know, weird stuff like that, or birth dates like 0205-1986. And people will pay for that kind of stuff. And then they take the money back. And instead of going to the same bank, they'll go to another branch and get 500 ones there. And they just kind of work their way around the whole system. Reselling is pretty cool, right? A lot of stuff we can do. Here's something out of my bin of books. I don't know if I'm going to keep getting these. These are just Cooks Illustrated. Super nice uh, kind of stuff. But these Cooks Illustrated, they take up a lot of room and they're not a high dollar item. So uh, I'm probably not going to be picking those up much anymore because they stood or they hung around for a while. Thirty dollars plus uh, twenty dollars uh, shipping on that. Um, let's go into something that I just hated to hated to throw away. A couple of these things they don't take up a lot of room. This is Pokemon Gale of Darkness. This thing is in bad condition. Okay, not in great condition. I put acceptable. Told the people. They still purchased it, uh, Pokemon, $10 plus $5 shipping, obviously out of my bin of books. So, ah, uh, this one, um, this one hung around for a long time too. And, uh, Somerset Holmes, the graphic album. I have, if you know something about Somerset Holmes, let me know in the comments down below. Uh, very crazy comic, I guess the graphic album, they call it, but it is more of a, a comic and uh this sold for not a uh, big money somerset what did it did i put it on here i better i'm just struggling you know where did i give a somerset nah i'll put it up there you'll see what it's whole for it wasn't a whole lot boy tonight man i don't have it together i don't know why i thought i did all right <laughs> here we go I used to find a lot of these but now it's i haven't quite found as many but i'm the ones you want to look for uh, they're Cutco is the most popular one. This is Wustoff. And the only Wustoff one I get is particularly this one. It has all the slots, about 23 or 25 slots. So it's a knife block. And they got conditions got to play a little factor. You got to watch for little splits and stuff in them. But uh, the, the knife block sold for $38 plus 
plus $22 um, uh, shipping. So nice, nice find. I like that kind of stuff. I'm uh, going to save that guy for last. Here we go. Bin of books. Draw. There's a bunch of them. It says draw Mexico. It's just an easy step by step approach. There's several in here. There's all the year. All I have all of them. Europe, United States, everything. These are for homeschoolers, and uh, they sell for some decent money if you can find them. And I got a hundred and four dollars plus ten dollars shipping on this little set. Now, I had to hold on because a lot of people were giving me 70 75 but this was that same situation where I tell you, if you know it's going to sell for right around the number that you think it is, don't lower yourself down uh, to just give it away. So I just had to wait. I knew eventually I was going to get uh, some good money for that. All right, let's go into time to go into sports. We'll save that one for last. <laughs> don't know what it is yet, do you? Mako, kids bat, and baseball is starting to come up, so uh, bats are starting to sell. I sold one earlier, and this is the second one I sold. Um, you're looking for, you know, just when you see these, you just kind of know what it is. And this is uh, uh, Easton, it's a Mako or Mako, and the drop number is not, yeah, it's a drop 12. Remember we talked about that a lot, minus 12. So that's a drop 12. So this is, the number is 29 inches. That is how um, uh, long the bat is. The bat is 29 inches. You take away the 12 because that is then gives you the weight. So 29 minus 12. Do the math, Mike. <laughs> what is it? Oh, I said 29 minus 12 is 17. So it's a 17 ounce bat. You got to put that stuff in your ad. You got to keep that. Oh, they're going to ask you that. You're going to want to know the length and the weight and the drop. All that has to be in concert. You need that. Ah, uh, finally, some golf. So the weather's changing. Golf is picking up. And this is tailor-made. So look, see the cover, guys? Everybody, if you see these covers, you know you're starting to get into something. It looks newer, modern. Now, if you look at this driver, or this is a driver. Yeah, this is a driver. Look at it. Really kind of cool. See that? Nice, huh? And this is a tailor-made, and this is a nine and a half degree loft. Beautiful driver. It has this graphite look to it. Now, remember we talked about the key. If you don't have the key, these weights are movable. If you look, one side says fade, one side says draw, um, and you can change the bias a little bit, the weight dis dispersion, that kind of thing. This is the M3. Um I'm going to check something here. Am I doing something right? Yeah, I, I'm M3. I'm thinking of myself something. So anyhow, uh, the M3, and we got, uh, what did we get? What did we get? What did we get? $118 plus $17 shipping. I mean, I don't know. No, I mean, long day. I'm doing this one at night. I usually do them kind of midday, late in the day, and I think it's just like, Mike, I am like, whew. Got back. I think I'm still on the uh, jet lag. I think that's hurt me a little bit. Uh, I'll tell you, going there, I have the worst time. It takes me, I'm not kidding, about a week to figure it out body-wise. My body clock is so messed up. And then I come back this way, and I do a little bit better. But right now, what time is it? I'm on I'm about 10 o'clock uh, East Coast time, 7 o'clock West Coast. So I think I'm finally you know, starting to feel a little bit of it. Okay, now, we talk about the golf clubs, and I believe I got these, if you watched my video, uh, of books. I was, there was a, uh, on the dock, one of the managers said, hey, we got some golf clubs, and I went up and looked at them, and wanted $5 each, so I paid $30 for these. This is TaylorMade, okay, RBZ. I knew that they were really rocket blades. I knew they were good, and on these, uh... These were actually, I think these are stiff. I'm trying to find, yes. There's the Flex S. So you see the S right there. And you also got to get the grams, 85 grams for the shaft. I almost kept these. I had two sets. Well, I really had three. One was brand new. Another one that was uh, the ones that I play now, but a step down. And then these. And I had to make a decision on which set to bring to North Carolina. So I brought the step down version of the ones I play now. These were close, okay? These rocket balls, I almost I almost pulled the trigger on them. But anyhow, long story short, 
These sold for a hundred, I think, and seventy nine dollars for the golf clubs. Uh, the, the Sims driver sold for one hundred eighteen, and the golf clubs sold for one hundred and eighty plus twenty four dollars shipping. Oh, Somerset Homes sold for I think uh, fourteen. Eh, I'm going back and forth. I'm all over the place. Okay, let's get into I believe the last item. Um, uh, you know I'm. I'm telling you guys, I am really feeling it. <laughs> I'm just having so much fun right now. Oh, goodness, Mike. Uh, okay, long story short. <laughs> Here it is, what well, we sold. Ooh, scary. Halloween, Department 56, The Scream. Okay, and I got this at Savers. Uh, there were a bunch that came out one day, and another picker and I were both looking at them. We both were kind of taking what we thought we could get. Uh, I pulled some, he pulled some, and I happened to pull the screen. And the screen, I think I paid about 20 bucks for it. And it, off season, it's not even close to Halloween, so it sold still. It sold for $425 plus $40 shipping. Now, an extra little tip here. Uh, you can use the video tape, the video feature um, on eBay, you can videotape up to 60 seconds and you do that, show it working. Okay. That helps sell something like this. So I use that video feature on a lot of things, my DVD, VCR combos, anything that's going to help me, my stereo receivers, hooking speakers, just anything that kind of gives your ad a little bit more punch, basically. That's what you want to do. So keep that in mind, uh, when you're, um, Doing your ads on eBay uh, and especially electronic stuff like that, that's how you prove that it works. You know, saying that it works is one thing, but if you show it working and then they say it doesn't work, you know, you at least have something to say, hey, look, I showed you the video, that kind of thing. So that's how you do that. So there you go. That's it, guys. I'm looking to make sure how many more mistakes I made tonight. I'm a little punchy. I'm ready to go to bed pretty much. I think I'm, I've am i got one more box of books to put in. See, the life of a reseller. We may work 10 hours a day sometimes, okay? But in between, we have two hours here where we're not doing so, You know, it, it is a day, no matter what you do. Sometimes I have to work at night. Sometimes I have to work a little bit on Sunday. But then I take time off here. I take time off there. The one good thing about reselling is you can make your schedule. I was trying to get this uh, all shipped out, and I said, you know what? I'm not going to worry about this. I'll do it in the morning or tomorrow and get it out. That's why I have three-day handling. We all have to – sometimes you got to just tap the brakes a little bit, slow down, don't worry about it. Um, I'm a one-man show here. You see me doing Amazon books. You see me doing all this from finding, listing, shipping, and, you know, I might be crazy, but uh, – that's the way I'm built. I'm built like this. I can't change it. So thanks again for watching. And if you do, I appreciate hit the like, the subscribe, and the bell notification. I'm not here to sell you anything. I'm here to help you in your reselling. I'm here to help you in life. Anything like that. Um, I'm Mike. That's me. You get me. So thanks for watching. And I'll see you in the next video.